With climate change causing regional disruption in food supply as well as economic and political difficulties in the lower Mekong region, it is becoming more important to develop a regional strategy for resource management. In order to measure natural resources, it is important to understand the land cover of the region. However, every country has different ways of defining land cover and thus different ways of measuring it. Within Vietnam, the local land cover classification system is not consistent across different departments. The General Department of Land Administration uses different land use categories in Vietnam than the Forest Protection Department. While we were able to find the primary land cover classification system being used by Vietnam's federal government, we were unable to find corresponding land cover maps. However, through our research, we were able to find land cover data sets from outside transnational organizations. These include ones from Global Forest Watch and the Land Resource Management Unit from the European Commission or the EC. Using GIS technology, we were able to compare three maps, each one using a different classification system to measure the land cover in the region. In our analysis of the three land cover maps of Vietnam, we found different advantages and disadvantages of using each one. The first map by the Global Forest Watch provides an interesting visual of tree cover, but because it is an organization that seeks to conserve as much forest landscape as possible, has motives to define forest cover very broadly. Due to its general and unspecific categories of forest and non-forest, this map would not be very useful in understanding and managing the diversity of land cover in the lower Mekong region. In contrast, the two maps by the EC are much more detailed and comprehensive. Their use of the LCC uses much more precise terminology to define the diverse vegetation throughout the world. Additionally, the system uses a hierarchical classification, which allows regional partner to describe the land cover classes best suited in their region of expertise, while following a standardized classification approach. However, the system translates the regionally defined legends into more generalized global land cover classes for the Global Land Cover Project. These global classes describe the type of vegetation and the density of the cover, independent of geo geoclimatic zone such as temperate or tropical forests, while the two maps of the EC allow for a consistent global land cover classification based on regional expert knowledge, they do not match exactly with the classification systems provided by the Vietnamese government. The first map by Global Forest Watch shows tree canopy cover in Vietnam for the year 2000. The Global Forest Watch is an organization that provides people with interactive online forest monitoring in order to assist them in managing and conserving forest landscapes. This global data set provides a visual representation of forests and non-forest and defines trees as any vegetation taller than 5 meters in height. The map has a spatial resolution of 1 arc second per pixel, or approximately 30 meters per pixel at the equator. The second map is from the EC and the general objective for this project was to provide a harmonized land cover database over the whole globe. This map in particular is of Central Asia and uses the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's Land Cover Classification System, or LCC. This data set has a spatial resolution of one kilometer at the equator. The third map is from the same global land cover project conducted by the EC in 2000, but this data encompasses South Asia as well as Southeast Asia. This data set also has a spatial resolution of one kilometer at the equator and uses the United Nations LCC. As land cover in Vietnam is quickly changing due to deforestation and degradation of its forests, conversion of natural forests to hydropower schemes and conversion of its mangrove forests to shrimp farming, it becomes ever more important to develop a regional land cover classification system to effectively manage its resources. However, throughout this process, we encountered several data information challenges that demonstrates that this feat is not easy. The most pertinent issue was inconsistent data products. Ever within Vietnam's own national government, land cover classification systems vary between departments. Furthermore, the two maps we use from the EC use different terminology to characterize land coverage. While our comparison of different classification systems is imperfect due to incomparable methods of measuring land cover, we recommend that policymakers seeking to develop a regional strategy to resource management use the second map, including the greater part of Central Asia. We make this suggestion because the first map by the Global Forest Watch only includes data on the first coverage and defines trees very broadly. The obvious benefits of using the EC maps is that they are more specific in detail, allowing for optimal natural resource management. While the LCC utilized by the EC does not match up perfectly with DOM's local definitions, it employs regional expertise to create comprehensive terminology. 
Furthermore, we found that the first map of Central Asia is of greater use in comparison with the map of South and Southeast Asia. While both maps provided by the EC utilize the same detailed classification system, the map of Central Asia has greater coverage of the lower Mekong region as a whole, better aligns with local definitions, and also includes pertinent vegetation for that region. The Southeast Asia map includes land coverage mapping of tropical vegetation that is not relevant to Vietnam, which is why we recommend using the EC map of Central Asia. Our study of Lower Mekong's land coverage has been a very educational journey. We learned to gather and analyze different types of data sets and employed complex GIS technology to aid our comparisons. In all, the Lower Mekong land project has been a successful one as we were able to draw many conclusions from our study, despite encountering several roadblocks such as data information challenges. We hope that policymakers may find our recommendations useful in developing a regional strategy.